hi everybody and um, today I'm going to show you how to do this square um, I have put the um, border on this one as well um, just to save myself a bit of time later on so I'll also show you how to do, to do that as well because because we've got three different types of squares we've got this we've got these squares that's a square <laughs> these squares to to think about and we've got the other squares in which you want as well to think about bordering I've decided to show you how to border these ones within this tutorial um, so then when we come to pre-bordering everything to before we sew everything up together um, you'll already have these ones done so as you can see from the previous squares that we've done we've done them in clusters so you've got three sets of three with a, a chain three space in between um a chain three yeah chain one even <laughs> i was thinking about another pattern that i was thinking of doing uh, in my head then um so yeah you've got three sets of threes trebles in with a chain one space in between on these ones you don't have any chain spaces so you're not working in clusters all you're doing is a one treble and the stitches on the row below on two in the corners not three um so i'll show you how to do this plus on this one uh, i didn't do a I didn't start with chain chain spaces, I did a magic ring, so I'll also show you, show you how to do that um, within this tutorial as well. Um, and then if you struggle with doing the magic ring, you could always do chain four and start it the same way as these squares. Because in theory, as you can probably tell, this, this centre is the same as this centre. So you could always start the same way you did on these ones, on this one. And then I'll meet up with you on round two. But if you want just to follow along with me, um, I'm just doing this square with the magic ring. So we'll start off with learning how to do that. So once you've got the yarn colours that you're actually using, um, on this one... You can also change your colours, which I will do later on, every round or even every um, stitch, which I'll... Ooh, might do that. That's just for me another idea. Um, I will do another tutorial um, this week as well, showing you how to carry yarn around. Um, but we'll start with the basic one colour but you can mix it up and if you fancied the shilling so anyway um, we'll start off with the magic ring now there's so many different ways of doing it um, the way I found, find it easy doing is I wrap it around two or three of my fingers like so so I've put it around three Make so the working um, part of the yarn is towards the back and the non-working part is towards, well, make sure it's crossed over. And then you, what you do is you go underneath the loop and feed the working loop around like you're going to do a chain one. And then what I tend to do is, as you can probably see, is I put one of my fingers and pressure on that section here, just to keep it unlocked. And then I pull my working yarn and start feeding it through my hand, but as if I'm about to do a chain one, which I am. So you chain one, which then that locks that space, uh, that interspace. In theory, it will lock it into space. So you go like that. 
like so. Chain one which will lock it in. Like that. So that's what it should in theory look like. Yeah, and then you can either so once you've got and that's what your magic ring this is the bit that well I call it a magic ring, some people call it um a synth circle because you're actually literally synth in the middle close so you can't actually see a hole. You can on that one because I haven't actually worked my tail in yet to hold it. Um but some people struggle on how to do this. If you've struggled how to do that, I will do another tutorial later on defining it a bit more. But if you are struggling, just chain four. It'll and then slip stitch into the first chain. Um but anyway, once you've got to this point, we're now gonna do three trebles into this space. Like you would normally. And the first one's usually the harder one to do because um, the hole moves a little bit. And then I just tend to hold everything into. into I even sometimes, as you've probably told there, put my, one of my fingers into the actual hole. To um, put tension on it, I couldn't think of that word then. Uh, so once you've done your first cluster, or your first three trebles, we need to chain two like we would normally on these ones for the corner space, and then do your next three trebles. Like so. And then you probably already guessed it. Chain two for the corner space. Three more tribbles. And then grab my yeah. There we go. So I've got two more troubles to do. Like so, and then chain two. And that, in theory, you should have kind of a bit of a loop here, and then you four clusters. Of three trebles, and now if you are following along with me, I'm assuming that um, as you can see, I've got the loop and I've got this tail here. Um, and what I'm just going to do, as um, the name of the uh, sink circle applies, yeah, we're literally going to squeeze. Well, I put a little pressure on the last um, treble and literally cinch the uh, circle close. Um, and then, let's just go back out. And then what I'm going to now do, I haven't zoomed out, sorry. There we go. And now I'm going to, like on the other squares, Slip stitch the first trouble on the top of the chain three, whichever one you've done first. I'll also then try and pull that little circle a little bit there. There we go. Now, uh, if you're changing colours, this is everywhere. This is where you can uh, change colours off by going like that and snipping your yarn and then 
joining in any of the chain spaces. If you're not, chain one like I've just done and then what we're going to do is yarn over and work back into that same space and do a treble like so and then you're going to do a treble into your next treble from the row below so this is the repeat row for the squares if you're going to make if you're making your squares bigger um you just repeat this row until you've got it to the size that you want so I've got three trebles there matching the three trebles in the row below and now I'm going to put two trebles into the chain two space and this is how each row grows literally by the corner spaces so chain Moved my camera, sorry. Chain two, and then two more trebles into your chain two space. So every chain two space will get the same on every row. Um, two trebles, chain two, two trebles. And then every row will get a treble in every stitch and every treble from the row below. So on this row, because we've got three trebles in the row below, in the first in this cluster, we get we do three trebles. So every row will grow by four stitches. Now we're at our next chain two space. We'll put two trebles. Chain two, two more trebles. And now we'll put one treble in every stitch of the row below, of the trebles below, should I say. We're at the uh, so once you've done them three trebles, you're at the chain two uh, space, which you put two trebles, chain two, two more trebles. And then one trouble in the trebles below and then we're at the chain two space that gets two trebles chain two and two more trebles Like so. And then slip stitch into the top of the chain. I let the uh, treble from the red black. So that's what your second round should look like. You've um, gone from three stitches to seven this round. Um, and like I said, every row will grow by four stitches. So this next round, round two, which I'll let you do by yourself, you'll chain one. And because if you are changing the colour, this is where you'll snip off and you'll start in your corner space. You can either start with two trebles, chain two, two trebles, and then work a treble in every stitch along, and then you're at your next corner space. But if you're not changing colour like I'm on this round, you'll have the one, the treble, uh, chain one and a treble into this stitch, 
when you've when you've come round to this corner, you'll do you finish the corner up like we normally, and then you'll do two trebles. Well, one treble in the next two stitches afterwards, and then slip stitch. I'll meet back up with you that, at that point in a minute. But every round, uh, every side of this round will get which should have. Um, 11 trebles and that's the seven trebles that you've worked one treble into every stitch and two trebles at the beginning and at the end in the corner spaces so to so start off you go one chain one and one treble into the same stitch that chain one and one treble into every stitch until you get to your ch next chain space like so like so and then you write your chain two space which will get the same on every single corner two trebles chain two and two more trebles uh, and then just repeat this until you get to the step uh, back to here and I'll meet back up with you all right so I'm I'm back up at the um, last corner so like on the previous corners I'm gonna put two trebles chain two and two more trebles into that space like so And then I'll have two more trebles to work one treble into each, and then like so. And then I'll just oh, quite a bit faster. And then what I'll do is I'll slip stitch into the t top of there, and then chain, uh, tie off. And then that's the last round of that. Tight. So that's the end of the actual main square. I'm now going to show you how to put this border on that I put on. Um, now, if every square will get a slight, well, every square will get a, a double crochet border on it. But every square will be slightly different so that's one of the reasons why i'm showing you how to put the border on this one within this tutorial to save uh, time and having to do another tutorial especially for these ones um that's mainly because i didn't think of the actual edging of this individual squares until when i was making this one up um so anyway um Uh, and plus, you're probably already aware, um, if you have been following me since the first ep first episode of these, is this one, this square, has ele um, 11 stitches here plus the chain 2 spaces. So this one, the stitch count is will be slightly off on the squares. But you don't need to worry too much about that because we'll um I'll we'll figure it out uh just before we stitch it all up. So we do have the equal amount of stitches that we need for each square. It's more about the sizing, so once we've actually got everything dotted, we'll they'll all be the same size. Um and it will will we will get uh stitch count rate as well so don't worry about too much about that um so to try and get this white border on or cream border should i say um put a slip knot onto your hook like so and then what i do is i start in any chain two space 
and get your corner out of the way like so and then chain one and then work four double crochets into that chain two space that's a bit loose <laughs> Oh, that was just a little baby girl, Daisy Boom. Two, three, four. And then we'll put in one double crochet on top of every stitch along, like so. Working over them tails. I mean, it's less things, uh, um, unless tails for us to hide in later. Um, So on this border, we will be putting one treble in every stitch until we get to the corner spaces. Once we get to the corner spaces, oh, I'm getting hooked up here. Every right, so I'm at the corner space now. So every corner will get the same four doubles. We're not doing any chain spaces on this border edge. Three, four. And then we'll just put one treble into, uh, one double into every treble along until we get back to, and four doubles into the corner spaces until we get back to the starting point which is where I meet back up with you. So once you've got you done your last double crochet into the last treble and um, you ignore the chain one space and go into the uh, first double and slip stitch and then tie off. That's the end of the round. There we go. And then what I tend to do is flip over and I'll hide the tails. I'll sometimes pull this little tail up a bit just to tighten it up a bit. And then where's the there go. and then I'll pull that bit as well. That's the other tail. And then just snip them off because I've worked over them. And then I'll go on, hide that tail, hide that tail, and then that's the squares done. So once you've got your 15 to 20 squares of these done, uh, I'll meet back up with you. Hope you've enjoyed that, that tutorial, um, and I hope you stay safe, and see you next time. Bye.